So chapter 19, special radiographic procedures. <clears throat> so we're going to be talking orthography, biliary duct procedures, <clears throat> which if you remember, we've already covered quite a bit of them. Uh, hysterosalpineogram, myelogram, myelography, um, orthoretinography, orthorankinography, and then conventional tomography. And we talked about conventional tomography when we talked about imaging of the kidneys. <clears throat> so, orthography. It's a contrast media study. <clears throat> so, they're looking at the synovial joints and your soft tissues, um, tendons within there, uh, making sure that the capsules, the, the synovial capsules are all in one piece. So, joints that are commonly examined are um, hip, knee, ankle, shoulder, elbow, and wrist. More often than not, what you see in the department are going to be um, knee and shoulder. Those are the most common for what you're going to see. Um, usually it is fluoroscopy, an injection of the dye, the contrast material, and then they're going to go ahead and go to um, CT or MRI. Um, they used to do conventional x-ray uh, imaging on them, but they don't do that anymore. So MRI and CT has taken it over. But um, shoulder arthrogram and knee arthrogram, those are the ones that you're probably going to see the most. So <clears throat> the knee, uh, this is a review of um, uh, lower extremity. So your, uh, your PCL, your ACL your LCL, lateral cruciate ligament, MCL, medial cruciate ligament, PCL, posterior cruciate ligament, ACL, anterior cruciate ligament. You've got the patella here with their ligaments attached into the tibia and then to the femur. So what they're doing is they're looking at that synovial joint, that synovial cavity to make sure that it is um, still has synovial fluid in it. It's not burst it's not leaking out um, basically that it's all intact and then a lot of times when they do that they can see some of those tendons as well so a knee arthrogram orthography uh, assesses the knee joint so know that you're assessing the knee joint and also associated soft tissue structures the joint capsule the menisci and ligaments. So you're going to assess and be able to view all of them. This is showing the lateral knee arthrogram and you can see the contrast um, that's been injected into that knee joint. So your knee orthography, clinical indications, um, tears in the joint capsule, uh, tears or degeneration of the menisci, ligament injury. So we know that um, a lot of times with knee injuries, you may have this, but a lot of times the knee arthrogram is going to come like after you've had surgery or a lead up to the surgery. So just make sure that your history is a uh, complete history and you know what's going on and you really know why they're there. So also contraindications, your history should include uh, questions about sensitivity to iodine, iodine-based contrast, um, and then local anesthetics because they are going to give a local anesthetic um, to insert and inject that dye into that form. Also, there is an informed consent form. Sometimes you guys will have to do this. Um, other times, nurses will prepare them for the informed consent and take the informed consent and then it's just up to you guys to prepare the room, bring the patient in, get the patient prepared for the radiologist. But every clinic site is different. Know what your clinic site's going to do. So orthography equipment, this usually is all in a tray. Most all of it's in a tray. You may add a needle or a syringe. Um, just know what you're going to be getting. So fluoroscopy and spotting image. So uh, you're going to use fluoroscopy. Be familiar with the fluoroscopy. Conventional x-ray tube capability, that's if the clinic site requires um, after films or before films. So just know the protocol. And then your arthrogram tray usually has uh, prep sponges. So your prep sponges right there. 
uh, fenestrated drape. So this is your drape right here. Um, syringes, we know that these are the syringes. And then flexible connector. Depending on the radiologist and what they're going to do, your two flexible connectors or at least one, and then your needles. And you can see that they've already put the needles on the syringes. And then you have this needle here if they're going to draw any fluid out. And then you have the two containers if they withdraw fluid. Um, they'll put the fluid into those containers to send to the lab. And then this right here is the... Um, the anesthetic um, that they'll use to deaden the area before they go ahead and introduce the contrast. <clears throat> and then also somewhere along the way you should have a bottle of contrast um, for the radiologist. So needle placement and injection, so prepare the site. Uh, retro patellar, lateral, anterior, or medial approach. So all of these approaches here are uh, are viable approaches. It just depends on what the radiologist use, uh, uses and which way he's going to go. So make sure that you know your radiologist and, and know his approach so you can um, set it up appropriately. And then skin anesthetize. Sometimes they have an ointment that they can rub on so it um, deadens the skin um, so it doesn't hurt when the needle goes in. Uh, but once again, that all depends. Fluid aspirated, if you're going to uh, remove any fluid, uh, going to collect any of that fluid to send to the, the lab, and that would all be within the orders or within the scope of the protocol. So your contrast media, 5 mil of positive, 80 to 100 milliliter of negative CO2 or air. And the contrast media, once again, is dependent on the clinic site, what they're going to do. Um, what their protocol is for. Usually it's just the contrast media. And then remove the needle um, and uh, take care of the knee and then send them to CT or MRI depending on where their next order is for. So fluoroscopy and radiographic imaging. So when they used to do imaging um, the knee was stressed during fluoroscopy with use of a compression band. So you can see that there's a compression band right here across this knee and then the radiologist with the lead line gloves or this fellow here without they're going to move that knee to certain positions and then um, sometimes they're they're going to take still images with fluoro or they're going to fluoro while they're doing it just to make sure that that knee is moving that that uh, the contrast materials being moved around within that knee joint before they go ahead and go to um, MRI or CT. So should wear lead gloves, um, a protective apron, you're going to closely collimate views of the meniscus and then 20 degree rotation of knee between each exposure. So you're going to rotate 20, take a picture, rotate another 20, take a picture, rotate another 20 and take a picture. So these are your for your fluoro imaging, and anymore if a radiologist does it, he just kind of fluoros while he's moving it, so so he knows um, what everything looks like. So the way they used to do it was evaluation criteria, the fluoroscopy imaging. Each meniscus is visualized, and you can see here and here and here uh, the meniscus all the way through. So opt optional exposure, optimal exposure factors and then images marked properly. So you would have your marker, uh, more than likely it would be down on this, um, the lower side here uh, while you're taking these images. And there's nine images, so this is something to remember. So nine images each 20 degrees apart from one another, okay? So you would start, this is 1, rotate 22, rotate 23, rotate 24, rotate 25, rotate 26, rotate 27, rotate 28, rotate 29, and that is the imaging that is done for 
the knee. So remember that there's nine images and each are 20 degrees apart. So radiographic imaging, <clears throat> your entire articular, uh, articular capsule is outlined. So you've got the entire knee, you've got the, the distal femur, you've got the proximal radius and ulna, you've got um, good collimation on either side, proper AP lateral position, which if you remember a proper AP, you're rolling that leg in medially about five degrees to get set to a correct AP position, okay? So optimal exposure factors and then markers and patient ID is visible, so make sure that you have your, your anatomical markers on. And these markers can either be high or low. It doesn't matter just as long as they're out of the anatomy. And then a proper, properly positioned lateral, which your lateral, remember, is your five to seven degrees uh, cephalid, okay, angle, so you are able to um, make sure that your condyles are superimposed over one another and that you're not rolled too far forward or too far back that um, you're not able to see that adductor turbicol and uh, you visualize your condyles superimposed over top of one another. So don't forget to roll in your foot five degrees for a true AP and then angle your five to seven degrees and then cephalid uh, for a true lateral knee. So once again, evaluation criteria fluoroscopy, six or more exposures, it's usually nine. Uh, collimated field to overlap, so you're you're making sure that you have collimation enough to see um, the a little bit of the femur and then a little bit of the, the tibia and then 20 degrees in between each one. Optimal exposure factors, factors. Each meniscus is visualized and centered, so centered and visualized, and it's just rotating from one side to the other all the way through to visualize both meniscus and then correct marker for the side of interest. So this is your CT orthography, uh, often performed following conventional orthography. So usually they'll go to CT, just depends. Sometimes they may go to MRI. But this, as you see here, is a coronal and a sagittal view of the knee. And you can still see that uh, contrast material in uh, that synovial capsule. Okay. So they're just looking to make sure that everything is where it should be, that um, your meniscus is there, your, um, your tendons are in uh, where they're supposed to be, and then that uh, contrast material stays within the area that they have injected it. So shoulder orthography demonstrates soft tissue and structures just like the knee, so soft, soft tissues and structures. It's a single contrast procedure, so 10 to 12 milliliters of positive contrast media. Dual contrast procedure, um, if they're going to inject air, so less positive contrast, so instead of 10 to 12, you're 3 to 4 of that positive contrast. And then air, negative contrast, 10 to 12 milliliters of air. And then fluoroscopy guidance for needle placement. So once again, uh, the shoulder joint, you're going into that um, synovial joint, into the glenoid fossa, the glenoid humeral cavity. That's where that uh, dye is going to be injected. You're going to visualize the, the capsule, the tendons, and then just make sure that everything is... Um, okay within that shoulder. So you can see the die here. Uh, suggested positioning. So routine, if you are if you have to take still films, which usually they don't anymore, they just take floral films, and then they send them to, like I said, CT or MRI. But if you're going to do anything, you're going to do a scout AP projection. So an initial image of the shoulder, and then um, an internal and external of the shoulder, so your AP projection internal, AP projection external, 
you may need to do um, an image of the the fossa so um, AP oblique where you oblique and then you visualize that uh, glenoid cavity which is the Gracie method you may have to do a transaxillary or an intertubecular groove the Fisk modification so I know at this point you're gonna have to um, look back into your chapter at your shoulder and just review for the the AP oblique, the Gracie, the transaxillary, and then the intertubecular, the Fisk modification. Just so you know what these are talking about, just take a quick moment and review on those, okay? So CT orthography, uh, once again, they're going to go to CT. You can see the dye in here. Uh, these are coronal and sagittal views of the shoulder and then they're going to use those to continue to diagnose what may be going on with any of the the, the capsule or the tendons um, around that shoulder. Uh, so part two is the biliary duct procedure. I'm going to go ahead and post this first video for the knee and the shoulder and then we'll come back and we'll talk about uh, the biliary duct procedures. So I will see you shortly.